Yeah, no, same. Oh, yeah, it's same color. <laughs> hey, YouTubers. What's up, Fantastic Bill here outside Kingsbury, Texas, at a place called the Pioneer Flight Museum at Aerodrome. Uh, we're going to go check in. They got a little plane up there. <laughs> it's spinning right now. It's out in the country, it's off of the cool. Farm to Market Road 1104. A business that rebuilds, builds mm -hmm. and rebuilds uh, aircraft. So that okay. started as a set of planes. All right. Right, and it was just built, mm. right? Um, or uh, like these two that are going on, that's a, an original, I don't know if you know, the J3 Cub. Okay. This was the predecessor. This is the Taylor Cub. It's called the J2. And then this is a, a British trainer that they're rebuilding. So oh. they're about to put uh, the landing gear back on. That's why it's on its side. Mm -hmm. So they can put, they're rebuilding one of the okay. landing gears. Huh. And then... You know, they actually, like, if you look up top there, those are wings, you know, the next plane they're going to build, those are the wing, um, uh, what do you call them? Ribs. Ribs, okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, but, you know, there's there's extra props for who knows what you're going to build yeah. next. And some of these are historic uh, wing sets that go to some of these frames in here. So someday we'll get to those. Yeah, that you see up there, yeah. Huh. Yeah, and then um, back in here is really like the engine shop. Okay, see, we some yeah. of the warbirds will make fake machine guns. Huh. Here they're rebuilding the uh, the cylinders, putting new rings on right now to put the pistons back mm -hmm. in for this yellow one out here. It okay. had some issues. The, the said, this, um, one, this one doesn't this one doesn't mm -hmm. matter. So either way, it's a whole yeah, shop that actually builds yeah. metal bits as needed. And fabricate as needed. Fabricates. Yeah. Uh, and you know you've got like every part in the world, every rivet <laughs> that you need, and everything like that. A lot of this was bought like government surplus when they. Yeah shut down a shop um, and that really helped him get into yep. business. Um, they're down there, that's the paint shop. So you can see all those brightly colored cans, yeah. that's aircraft paint way down there uh, through that little door. So, and then metal shaping is this back room here, hmm. benders, grinders, shapers. So this is where we build airplanes. Um, again, some of these are to be done yeah at some point huh. um, so so then, they get those and get like that huh? yeah, yeah start start with that and turn it into this yeah right here and we're still waiting on the tail plane for okay this. Um, there was a discrepancy in the plans so they're trying to fix that and in the, this is what they're working on the engine for so oh, okay today we'll have this thing fired up Hmm. Uh, if we get to work on it enough. So that's what this hangar is. Um, now, I don't know if, you're, if you want, but upstairs is a complete library of hmm. aircraft books and um, you know, all those types of things yeah. in which, uh, which people can do research as well. Hmm. Now we're going to try to move that over to the side of the main okay, hangar. Yeah. Um, and then we also have like that's a Model T engine. Um, oh, wow. We've got uh, almost 20 Model Ts now. We'll go see. Wow. But they start like that, or they start as a pile of rusty <laughs> metal bits. And you get things together. And yes, you sir. build them. Yep. You just uh, build them. So out here is a landing strip, a grass okay. landing strip that, um, oh yeah, I need to put this in my car. <laughs> um, and then a model airplane one. So they come okay. out and fly model airplanes on this side over here. And then that is an actual FAA certified runway. Oh, wow, okay. Over there. Um, not much in this hangar except storage. Right. And he was driving down the road, and he said, hey, this is the perfect spot to watch the eclipse. Huh. Um, whatever, whoever was telling him, and he just sort of pulled in. 
Uh, he bought a raffle ticket for the Model T we're raffling on. Oh, okay. Yeah, I saw that on the internet. And, um, yeah, we'll take a look at that car here in just a second. Um, and then uh, decided that this is the place we needed to see the huh. Eclipse from. But they said the San Antonio area, east of San Antonio, was the best. Yeah, well. All the way down to Corpus. So, this hangar was originally a Kelly Field. Okay. Um, and we're going to build on Stand. the other side of it here and then move the library in here. Okay. So that it's all in the same hmm. space. This is our main hangar. Hmm. So, um, this is a, it would be a Curtis Jenny, but it was built in Canada, so it's a Canuck. <laughs> uh, it was a, a license. They just helped build them mm. uh, as trainers for World War One. We have an ambulance, Model T ambulance. Um, if you later on, if you want to learn how to drive a Model T, we can put, oh, wow. put you in one and drive it around. Hmm. This is what was called a penguin trainer. So before they got in this, they learned to drive this around on the ground. Wow. Right, and how things worked and and that but this never flew so it was just a ground trainer um, and it helped people learn the controls wow. before getting in this and taking off so we have various engines on display if you have any questions about them I can certainly okay. answer them but we'll look at rotaries and radial engines on the planes themselves here um, so this was the one of the V8s during World War I. Um, came from a 1908 model, but this was a later, a later one that was a little more advanced. Hmm. Um, so now this would be the oldest plane. This is a uh, Valkyrie, and um, about. 1907, so four years after the rights, this is what they had Another plane. To, to build. Um, what you'll notice is all of the wires. So the wood itself really doesn't hold the tension, mm -hmm. but the wires, the wires actually are... hold everything together. So as we go through here, keep an eye on the wires, because okay. you'll see a design like this that has all the wire mm -hmm. bracing. And then you'll see as we get into the late war period, there's no wires. Mm. So they started to internally brace things. But this is sort of a box kite um, design. This was one of the first ones. Um, there was a big war about the aileron versus wing warping. Mm -hmm. So you'll see it has the actual um, ailerons on it. This is a fuselage of a World War I German albatross, uh, D3 or D5, I'm not sure which. Um, but the wings have never been built. We don't have plans for them hmm. uh, at this time. Uh, the Liberty engine, that, uh, that big thing was, um, was end of the, the war. Uh, big V12 in the back there mm -hmm. uh, was sort of the state of the art at the end of World War I for the American Liberty engine. Um, again, various old-timey motorcycles, most of them run. Oh, that's cool. They all leak oil, but most of them um, This is a replica of the plane that crossed the English Channel, first plane to cross uh -huh. the English Channel. Um, you'll notice there's no ailerons, though, so they would warp mm -hmm. the back of the wing. As you pull the stick over, it just pulls the back of the wing down, and that's how early they did it early on before they realized, hey, these little, these little flappy things at the back of the wing make a lot well, of sense. Well, make it they're but tight. again, it's all, it's all wire It makes braced. it go up and down. Um, you know, bicycle wheels, mm -hmm. etc. cetera. Uh, this would have been a 1909 uh, ambulance, Model T ambulance in the French colors. Hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, French World War I tank. Uh, I saw a video of you guys driving. Somebody was driving around yeah. here. Probably Al and, and, and yeah, it's a paint. That's the one in the video we saw yesterday. Well, huh. 
Um, so yeah, later on in the war, the Fokker triplane, the Red Baron's plane, um, you'll notice there's a whole lot less wires, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So as they went on, the wires create a lot of drag and they're starting to reduce the drag uh, of, the, uh, of the various things. Now I talked about a rotary versus a radial engine. A radial engine is, it's just round, but it okay. stays still and spins the prop. So the drive shaft is connected to the prop. Okay. On a rotary engine, the whole engine, engine rotates. Wow. I hope the mags are off. <laughs> this thing is sorry. Um, so it has a different set of characteristics. One, it cools itself very well. But two, that rotating mass makes it really hard to turn against the engine and really easy to turn with the engine. Mm. So the problem is the bigger you make it, the more mass there is. So they only got to a certain size before uh, they were just unwieldy. Mm. So. And this is the plane you'll see on the, like the website flying. Around. Yeah. Um, so here's the raffle car that we are selling raffle tickets to. You could win this. Yeah. And um, giving it away next spring, I think. Hmm. I think is when it is. Hmm. But. Um, yeah, we drive it around and take it to car shows and things, but she's a beauty. That's nice. Um, and then this would be like the last plane. It wasn't, it wasn't the last plane, but the last plane in force in the German Air Force in World War I was actually specifically outlawed in the armistice. Mm. It's called a Fokker D7. But you'll notice, you know, a couple of wires but it didn't even need these outer braces to fly. Yeah. The, the, the wings were braced inside. Hmm. And so they had figured that out. And this plane was fast and furious and deadly and, and really um, one of the, the scariest things to come out at the end of the war. Because we went from, you know, basically that to this yes. in 10 years. 10 year time frame, yeah. Yeah, just the war pushed everything forward so, so quickly. This is called a Thomas More Scout. This was actually the foundation airplane of the whole museum. Um, this was built by Roger Freeman and his dad and his brothers. Um, this is their first plane. The so, first one. Yeah. This is, holds a special, special place. Mm. It was a scout plane, so they would fly it over and try to take pictures or see where troops were and those types of things. But. Um, just a single seater, and it really didn't have a, uh, much armament on it oh, yeah. at all. So. so that's the collection of aircraft. Okay. Um, so we can now head inside where all of the display areas are, that kind of thing. And if there's anything specific you want to... No, we just saw it on the online and just like, hey, let's take a... The weather is nice today. Take a drive. Yeah. Although in a little bit the sun should start getting darker. Yep. I brought my solar <laughs> to watch it. Yeah. Faster. It said around 11:40. Yeah, right before noon. Yeah. The actual total eclipse. Uh, so we have our little gift shop for folks right. that want to take them home. Hello. So various models, but we start with, you know, selling the story, telling the story of the balloon, the Wright Flyer, and then moving through the World War One time frame through yeah, pre World how, how War Two, like the basics, oh. World War Two, post World War Two jets, modern and then ending with the SpaceX rocket. Mm. And then the plane is down. And then various other ones that didn't fit in that display case. <laughs> yeah, I saw that one. So part of the 
understanding and learning about flight, um, like Lillian Falls gliders were very important, and Octave Chanute, and just the various people that started with Da Vinci, ballooning, uh, Santos Dumont's um, dirigible airship, so he could fly that around and control it. Mm. That was a big step forward, and then we had different different people trying different things until the two bicycle brothers. So this is a replica of their first wind tunnel. Hmm. And um, they actually had an electric motor that would drive it and blow wind through there and they could actually figure out the center of lift and the drag and how to turn things and all that. So really it was a box just this size that they finally figured out how to make hmm. something that worked. So we have original radiator from uh, Beachy's aircraft. He was one of the early um, uh, flyers. Um, you know, various things through the development in World War I. Uh, some of the trench art, so with all the expended shells that they mm -hmm. shot off, they needed something to do while they were just sitting in the trench waiting for the next uh, chance to get shot. So we have some Canadian, British, German, and then uh, various U.S. Um, pieces in here as well. Some little dioramas, mm -hmm. the Wright Flyer, some of the Curtis um, planes, and then some of the World War I items. More World War I items, uh, just things like the first sets of bombs mm. that were, were dropped during World War I, but um, Army songbook, different goggles and glasses and helmets and things. That all this was just invented then. More models. This is another, uh, this is an actual Jenny, whereas the other one's the Canadian version, mm -hmm. this is the American version. Um, and we have the wings for it and the tail, so we mm. could build this out. It's not pretty high, not very high on the list. Yeah. A German dirigible above your head, flying to bottom, London, I guess. Some planes trying to chase it down. Well, <laughs> These things are, more local to San Antonio. Mm -hmm. um, these are things we've gotten that were actually from the early bases, pictures taken here. The Stinson sisters taught a lot of people how to fly, so there's Stinson Airport down okay. in San Antonio. Yeah, the southern San Antonio, yeah. Yeah. Um, really interesting, if you're not familiar with how the pitch changes in a prop, this really well sorts of shows you that it's a continual change right in, in how it grabs the air. Um, some period clothing. I don't know, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go through here, but I think it's important to show the delta here. Um, so this is the, the engine stays still and spins the prop. So mm -hmm. that's the one type. And then to compare and contrast that is, this is the one where the prop is connected, I have to hold on to the back of it, and the whole engine turns. And so mm. you can see how the props work. Yeah. Or the uh, pistons work there. Um, so anyway, just interesting to see the, the delta between the two. Uh, early spin training class, so they would run the pilots <laughs> through that and they spin it around really quick and see how sick you get, <laughs> kind of things. But that was Sorry. actually in San Antonio. They would test them. You sit there and then while you're training to turn on a fly, they spin it real fast and then you get up and you're supposed to walk. <laughs> uh, various World War I uniforms, uh, spotlight for helping to land planes in the evening or at night. Uh, what's interesting is in this Kelly Field uh, picture, mm -hmm. this hangar itself was actually in that picture. Okay. 
it's in that upper right quadrant. Um, and this housed World War I training aircraft in San Antonio World War I. So, now all of this skin is brand new. Yeah. But the, all the raw steel is from that original hangar. Hmm. So. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. yeah, it's gonna shit this one down. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. The nickel oh. holder. <laughs> um, sticking with aircraft, post World War One, there was a lot of new development in aviation mm -hmm. in the United States. So this next hangar is post World War One, mm -hmm. pre World War Two. Just various things. Uh, all these planes except one are flying. Um, that one got rebuilt and it's too, it's overweight. Hmm. So we have to take some stuff off, figure that out. <laughs> but this, this and the car barn over there, the metal on the outside, uh -huh. was the original metal from this hangar. Hmm. So uh, we used it to build these as we were rebuilding that. That's only been open for a year and a half. Okay, I will warn you, watch your head. Okay. Because the wings here are like lower. Can be right there. So this was a local um he was from Lago Vista, he flew this. This is a 1940s design, early 1940s design. This this design and then the Piper Cub, which became the L17 were both in a contest for li liaison aircraft. Okay. So what that means is they were trying to sell it to the army and this one lost and the other one won. Mm. The one like that yellow one down okay. there. This was a popular 1930s uh, home built. Um, usually set of plans or police would build it for you. Mm. Uh, we do fly this one, uh, the Curtis Jr. regularly. Um, this is another 40s design, well, late, late 30s actually. Uh, this is called an Aeronica, so if you've heard of the Champ series or the Cub, the Piper Cub and the Aeronica Champ were, um, were various. This is still being manufactured today as a Citabria, uh, aerobatic airplane, and that's where I learned my tail dragger is in one of those. This is a Dorme bathtub. Um, it <laughs> is a um, actual production aircraft um, in the 1930s to learn how to fly. So this one's been rebuilt a couple times since the 30s. Bathtub. Um, but it flies. Yes, it was there on the back too. This is called a Wacko, so this is a 1936 design. Um, this is when they started to get really serious about commercial airmail and stuff mm -hmm. like that. They carry a lot of, of stuff. This is still not this model, but it's still in production hmm. um, today. This is the Piper Cub, J3 Cub. It's still in production today. It originally flew. The blue one we saw without the wings on yeah. it uh, was the predecessor. So Mr. Piper bought out, um, what was his name? The, guy, the other guy. <laughs> and he took the design and then he made it into a, a plane that's still flying today and hmm. built Piper aircraft on this design. And this is called a Great Lakes biplane back here. That's another 1930s. Uh, we got a cracked rib on that one, so oh, okay. it's not flying right now either. We'll fix the wing on that, and then um, somebody stepped in the wrong place. Oh. And we may move the back seat back a little bit. It's awful small. <laughs> it's awful tight. Okay. 
So here you can see 30s and 40s, early early 40s, a uh, couple of like the last ones in the 40s. Yeah. So like you said, if you step in the wrong place, you go. Yeah, you go right through that lane. Yeah, it's not it's just like the loon. So everything here has fabric wings. Yeah. All these wings are fabric. Like cloth. But then again, my I got a little biplane built in the 1970s, mm -hmm. and it has cloth wings. Hmm. So we still use that today. Uh, you can buy a brand new Piper or uh, Aronica with cloth wings today. But you get a set of plans and you just start building. Wow. And then eventually you fly your airplane. So this shows us the, you know, where we came from the, the World War One aircraft into the uh, Pre World War II, yeah. yeah. And these get out and fly a whole lot more than those do. Those, those don't get out very often because they're irreplaceable. Hmm.